We know from the comments we get on Sailing Fair are that a lot of you guys are watching are new to sailing and one of the things about sailing is the jargon that's uh, involved. It can be quite intimidating and uh, not uh, are part of that. There are many, many different types and which ones do you learn, which ones do you need to know. Well, I'm going to try and go through four of the knots that I think you, you need to know. And these are, these are knots that you can tie without looking. You can tie at night at three in the morning and it's not going to be a problem for you. If you learn a few knots really well, that's much better than thinking you know how to do 50 different knots and you, and you really don't. So the one I'm tying here at the moment, the bowline, which I think most people would say is probably the most used, most important knot that you can learn on a boat. And that's because it can do all sorts of different things. You might want to use it for tying a rope just onto, onto something. There might be better knots for, for doing this, but a, a bowline will almost always uh, do the job for you. And uh, certainly for mooring lines and things, it's, it's something that you, you definitely want to know about. So how do you tie a bowline? Well, normally the way you're taught is the rabbit up the hole, which is a little hole, rabbit comes up the hole, round the tree, back down the hole, and you can get a bowline. It's a good method of tying a bowline. It does take two hands to do it. You're, you're just holding really in, in your left hand if you're right-handed. Uh, your loop, it's a, it's a loop that goes over. And you just come up and round and down. And you, you can get quite dexterous at that and, and just use the, the fingers on your left hand to, to help you go through. You shouldn't have to be sort of pulling it up, bringing it round, pushing it back down again with, with one hand. Things to, to know about a bowline, though, is that, I mean, the good thing about it is it's not a slip knot. It keeps, it keeps that uh, size the whole time. It's not going to contract on, on whatever you're tying it around. Uh, it's easy to undo. You just push this bit here to undo it, even if it's been really loaded up. I've never had one that you couldn't undo. So that's, you know, a really good thing about the bowline. But uh, one thing to, to remember with a bowline is that the, the tail of it, this bit here, should be reasonably long. Most people have them too short, me included. I mean, it's, it's, you sort of think, oh, well, that's, that's long enough. Really, it should be 20 times the diameter of the rope is what they say, which means actually on something like a standard sheet, you'd have about a foot of tail, which no one has. Um, but yeah, generally, try and keep the tail a little bit longer. So you've got much less chance of that then coming through and, uh, and that coming undone. But I've never had a bowline come undone, so I mean, they, they are a very good knot. The other way of tying a bowline, which is a quicker way, I, th I think, and it's a way that you can do if you're actually holding on to something as well, almost do it one-handed, um, is, is this way, is to come over, flip it, and go through. And that gives you a bowline exactly the same. So I'll just show you that again. Do your loop, flip the loop over, pull that up, come through towards you, and then pull and you've got a perfect bowline. There is a problem though, I think, with tying things this way, in that when you actually pull them taut, and I think this is worse even with, with longer ropes, if you're hanging on to the, to the bitter end of it as you, as you pull it, and you should tighten these up, same with you know, any way that you tie a bowline, most knots, get there, you've got to pull them tight, as well as leaving that long tail, you need to actually have, have, have pulled them up nice and tight so that they, you know, they will get a grip. Now with this, I've pulled it tight, but I've, I've had hold of the, the bitter end a little bit. And you can see, it doesn't even look like a bowline, does it? Um, I mean, it, it is, but it hasn't quite got there yet. And you can see, actually, I, I could just pull it through by pulling this line here. Um, what needs to happen is that it needs to actually flip over uh, like that. So now you can see it does look like a bowline, and it is a bowline. Um, and I'll, I'll show you what happens actually when you tie this using this, this method, this quick method. You pull up, you pull through. I'm not going to hold on to the bitter end. When you pull it, it's like that, but then boom, it flips over. It flips over to become a proper bowling. But that has to happen. It has to, the knot has to actually flip over if you're using that quick method. So actually, to be certainly when you, you start doing this, I would use the rabbit up the hole, around the tree, back down, um, and that gives you you're never going to go wrong with that. You're always going to get a good bowling. So that's not number one. Just keep doing it until you can do it in your sleep um, and then you can move on to the next one.
So I'm trying to pick a knot for each situation you might come across. A rolling hitch is a really good one because there's several good things that it can do that other knots can't do. Uh, the basis of it is, is that it's, it attaches and constricts and doesn't slip. Um, so one of those might be that situation here if you had a, a riding turn uh, that you've got on your winch and you needed to take the tension off, this uh, knot is brilliant for that. So to tie your rolling hitch, bring it round on the side that you're going to pull from, first of all, it wraps over the top of the rope, come across again, and through as a hitch, pull it tight, and that means then you can pull and it won't slip. So the rolling hitch will just then take any strain you like pulling in, in this direction. You can take it back, put it around another winch. You can see it puts a bend in the, uh, the standing rope there. They really hold on nicely. So if we look at that close up then, if the pull is going to be in this direction, then we need to go around the bottom first. We just overlap, come round again, and then through like that. Pull it tight and you can see no matter how hard you pull it, you can't pull down. I can take all my weight on that and it's a slippery bit of metal. It's a, it's a really good way of tying things. Another way of tying it can be to go around twice before you go over the top and then come around again and then go through. I use this for putting the snubber on the anchor if I'm just doing one line. Uh, you can just tie it on, it's, uh, it's, it's a good way of doing it. Uh, and this is a more secure way and it never comes undone. It's, it holds it really tight, saves you having a, a chain hook. So I'll show you one more time just slowly. If we go around the bottom end, we're gonna pull from that end, go across, come across again, and go through there. So all in all, a very good knot to have. So clove hitch, uh, one of the really useful knots, mostly used for tying fenders on, but there's all sorts of uh, uses for it. Thing to know about it is it's not massively secure if you haven't tied off to the standing line here. If you've just left it as it is, if you tie your fenders on like that and you leave them, then eventually when it's, it does this, jiggles up and down, and they will work its way loose and you will end up losing your fenders. So always with a clove hitch, once you, if you're using it for fenders and the fender's overboard, either tie it on to, to the uh, standing piece of line just, to, just in a, a hitch or you, could, you can do it as a, as a quick release where you just put the loop through and pull it. So that will hold it okay and it just does mean that when you want, when you want to get it out you can pull, just pull that and, and then loosen off from the, from the top and it's quite easy to, to get them off. So if I do it slowly, you just come up one side, cross over, come up the other side and underneath your loop, just like that. I wanted to include something for tying onto a bollard if you're faced with a bollard on the dock rather than a, than a cleat. Uh, so if we pretend this is our, uh, our bollard that we're tying up to and this is our mooring line. Uh, this is cross up really between uh, the round turn two half hitches and the lighterman's hitch for, for this. But I think actually the lighterman's hitch is better and it's just as easy to, to learn. With either of them, the most important thing is a full turn. So that's a full turn. So you've gone all the way around. That is not a full turn. So if you, on any of these sorts of knots, if all you do is come round to there and then start tying things off, that, that's not good enough. You need a full turn all the way around. And then for the lighterman's hitch, basically you come underneath the standing line and just take a loop and go over, come back and do the same the other side. And then you can I'm give myself quite enough rope, rope here. You don't have to tie off at the end, but I normally put two half hitches in the, in the end. And that would be absolutely fine to, to have that just like that. So I'll go through that again slowly. So take your line around the bollard all the way around in a full turn take it underneath and just a loop over, back over the top underneath loop back over the top and you can do this as many times as you like yeah, and I'll just then tie off with two half hitches here just to keep the end fine and that uh, that'll hold you in anything 
So that's your four knots. I admit I've cheated slightly because you do really need to, to be complete, we need to add a, a stopper knot on the end, just a way of putting a, a knot in the, in the end of a line so that uh, it won't disappear up the mast if it's a halyard or sometimes in the, you want them in the end of sheets. I don't normally, sometimes it's, it's better to, to be able to let them fly if you, if you really need to. Uh, but yes, you need to know a way of putting a, a knot in the end of a, a rope and normally it's, it's this knot that people use, the figure of eight knot, which um, it's fairly self-explanatory. You just come over, round, and back through, so it looks like a figure of eight. Um, I don't particularly like that knot. It's, it's not that elegant. It uh, can come undone. Um, it's obviously much better than just doing a, an overhand knot, a granny knot, which is you know just round and, and, and in. It's not really big enough and, and takes any, any sort of strain and you'll never get it undone. You'd have to cut that off. Uh, the one I use is it's a variation of a bunt line hitch. It's something that, that you know you can use, and it's a useful knot if you want to learn more, more knots. Look, look for a bunt line hitch. But this is just used on one piece of rope without going round anything. And it's easy to do. You just wrap it once round the standing line and then come through the loop. And then if, when you pull that up, you'll see you'll get quite an elegant little knot on the end of your line. It's quite big to stop it going through things. It, it won't get too tight and not be able to get undone. So I think that's the best option for a, a stopper knot. So I'll, I'll do it one more time. Just come over, over again, and then through, put it up, and that makes a, a very good stopper knot. Uh, there are um, other knots that I, I quite like, just as an extra. I mean, actually in the comments, if you want to come through and you know, if there's one knot that is a really useful knot that's not f that's, that some of the knots I've showed aren't fulfilling that sort of purpose, uh, it, you can show us those knots. But we're trying to keep this simple and not get into really complicated ones. But I think this, this knot's worth knowing. It's an alpine butterfly hitch. So if you want an extra one, this just comes, you lay it over your hand, round your fingers, and back over your hand, and then just take hold of this loop and pull it up through, and you'll get a loop in the middle of a line. So if you ever need to have loops in the middle of a line, that's the best way of doing it. And the, and the really good thing about this as well is you can apply pressure from, from both ends. Um, and what that means is this bit of rope here is, if it was damaged, it's protected. So if you had some serious chafing going on in a sheet maybe, you could just do a butterfly hitch just to protect that, that bit until you could get back and replace it. So really good knot extra not to, to use, I think. So if you've got any really good ideas of ones like that, then tell, say us in, in the comments and we'll uh, try and make a list of, of other ones for a, sort of a stage two of the knots. But I'll show you it once more. Lay it across your hand, around your fingers, go back across so you've got that there. Take this down and through and just put it out so you've got that as a loop and it won't it won't tighten and, and you can strain it from both ends. So I hope that's been useful. Do give us some comments. Thanks for watching.